This is a Violet Jester Media Podcast. Epic disaster. All right, so I'm doing the show by myself, and um, I'm waiting right now. Sherry's walking up the stairs, coming into the studio. Here she comes, bringing the beers. Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ. She's bringing the beers and Jesus with her. She's putting the beers down. You should close the door. Um, I've been up here for like 20 minutes waiting. Shut up. Um, so I just thought I'd go ahead and start the show. Wow, did I turn all this down? Yeah, you, no, some of it's mine. Let me have that one right there. Uh, that top one there, we need to. I need to have that, and the next one afterwards, I need to have that. And I think you printed all the rest of it out. This is the same thing as that. They printed it twice. Yeah. Okay. Right. See, we don't usually plan very heavily when we do the shows, and so um, we've started the show now, and we probably shouldn't have started the show. No, because clearly, I'm not ready. Well, I mean, have you ever really been ready? What the fuck? What are you looking for? Some of it, that stuff may be something I printed out. No, this is mine. Did you print out a book? No, I didn't know Wikipedia printed out so big. That's like, what is that, 50-point font? Something like that. Well, this is very interesting to our people who are listening right now. Um, I it think you have, the entire bibliography. Yeah, I know. That's why I don't do that. Uh, you probably sit down and, and let's get going. All right, jeez. Tell them your tits. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Look, you don't even have Zabmondo put together. You don't have your shit all I don't, in a row. I don't even touch Zabmondo. What? Exactly? It's always where it is exactly when we leave it for the last time. I didn't leave it there. This shit was not here last time. It was. You used it. Not like this. I haven't touched it. That's yours. That's all your stuff. I realize that. Your books. But it's your all stuff. in my way now. See, this is the... Okay, see, this is the stuff people don't get to hear. All you're complaining when you first come in. Jesus. About everything. Shut just up. constantly complaining. Constant. Non-stop complaining. You know, it's a good thing. I kind of like you. Are we ready? Should we do a show? I think we've already started the show. Hi, folks. Welcome to this epic disaster. As you can see, this is a disaster. No, I just thought it could be kind of fun to start early so people kind of know what it's like when we start the show. Okay, that's fine. Just craziness going on. Totally fine. All that, just so much craziness. I'm totally fine with that. Totally fine. Usually we're just sitting here (laughs) when we start the show. (laughs) You just picked the one day that I'm late coming yeah, upstairs. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought it'd be more interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Roy Clark died. Um, I'm kind of disappointed, uh, kind of upset. You know, I liked Roy Clark. You know, uh, for, a mi- for a minute, I got Roy Clark and Roy mm-hmm. Orbison mixed up in my yeah, head. he's been dead for a while. That was, that was weird. Something weird's going on in my ear. I don't know if it's actually my ear. Oh, I have my wireless on. Or it's the headphones. I think it's my headphones. No, I mean, oh, okay. I think it's my ear. I can't take my ears off, but I can take my headphones off. But I, I don't think it's my headphones. I think it's my ear. Well, I'm kind of glad that um, it's irritating. you can't take your ears irritating. off. <laughs> it's <laughs> irritating. It's <laughs> irritating. So, uh, yeah, uh, here's a weird thing. Like um, two, two, three weeks ago, maybe? Uh-huh. About that long. Uh, I was in Goodwill. And I bought a DVD set. I think it's got eight, uh, five, six, seven, eight, somewhere like that, DVDs inside. Mm-hmm. And it's all the old hee-haw. Hee-haw. Things. Hee-haw. Hold on a second. <clears throat> what are we holding for? I'm switching my headphones around. I'm going to see if it's That's my... weird. Why would you do that? I'm going to see if it's my headphones right or if it's my ears because right I can't on... switch my ears. So I'm seeing. Oh. Anyway, uh, it's my ears. Um, so, <laughs> and so I bought and started watching all these hee-haws because I grew up on a hee-haw. Yeah. My dad watched hee-haw all the time. Yeah. He just loved it. Um, and so I watched I think I mentioned it on the show a few weeks ago. And so I watched it. And I remember thinking... Wonder when Roy Clark's gonna go? Because you know he's got to be a little bit so old. So if you hadn't thought that, he might still be alive. It's I all your like fault. Maybe I killed him. Yeah, I think you did. But and then boom, here he is. Two weeks, three weeks later, he's dead. dead. He was, uh, I think he was my dad's age, which kind of surprised me. I didn't realize he was that old. 
he's my dad's age, but he always kind of reminded me of my dad. But mm. I mean, if you're a guitar player, you know this. One of the best guitar players ever. So underrated because he was a comedian and did kind of jokey stuff, did some right. TV and stuff. Fantastic on the guitar. Look at some YouTube videos of him playing guitar. Amazing, amazing guitar. Like, does he give Eddie Van Halen a run for his money? Yeah, I mean, he doesn't play that type of guitar, uh -huh. but he, he probably could. And I guarantee you Eddie Van Halen would be like, oh, yeah, Roy. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yep. All right, well, let's drink to him, shall we? We'll drink to Roy. Yeah. Who? Uh, speaking of drinking, uh, what are we drinking today? Today we are drinking a beer that you picked up. It's called Einstock. Einstock. Um... I can't read that. What can't you read? Einstock Olgard. Olgard. Oh. Anyways. It's, Some Nordic phrase. It's Icelandic toasted porter. Um, I am, you know, Nordic, so let's let's keep it on the DL there. Tastes like Bjork. Oh, I'm not sure about that. Okay, with clear notes of toffee and dark chocolate. Toffee? This, what? Toffee, not my dog. This porter is roasty and rich, offering a medium body that is robust yet smooth on the palate. Toasted and chocolate malts mm. give it a sinister black color. Ooh, sinister black color. But it's easy to drink. Taste will have you believing that there's no more need to be afraid of the dark. I made a mistake. Clearly. I came up here drinking coffee. I have in Whoops. my cup, I have coffee with some Irish cream in it. And so my, my taster is full of kind of creamy, sweet coffee. Well then, you need to grab you some water yeah. and clear out that palate. Yeah, because I, I don't I don't want it to interfere hmm. in this. Or you can just clear beer. your palate with that. What is that? Grape juice. Yeah, bull crap. You don't drink pure grape juice ever. No, it's not just pure grape juice, but that's one of the ingredients. Oh, that makes it worse. That's like a Rick drink: grape juice and vodka. That's like the sweat of a wino. But I, I watered it down because your grape juice is really thick and sugary. My, I have, I don't make it, you know. I just go <laughs> buy it. It's not mine. The kind you choose to purchase. All right, let's let's dig into this beer. All right, I'm gonna sniff it. Sniff that thing. Sniff it. Sniff it. Weird, but appropriate. Yes, it is. Kind of dark. It's it kind of sniffular. Yeah, it's got the some sniffs. word I just made up, sniffular. Sniffular. Mm -hmm. It's totally sniffular, dude. So what do you think? Interesting. A little cleaner than I was expecting. Not as dark and muddy. Well, it's not muddy. Maybe because I was drinking coffee. But it's probably one of those that uh, will taste different as we go along. Yeah. It's So far, I, I kind of dig it. Yeah. It's certainly dark. It is dark. I like those kind of beers, though. Um... I like the dark ones. We'll see what happens. I like my beer, like I like my beer. Dark. Mm -hmm. So you know what? This show is being released on the Monday just preceding Thanksgiving. What? Oh, thankfully. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Um so we're gonna talk about some of that today. Some Thanksgiving talk. Yeah. Well we're gonna talk, talk about some things, things that happened on Thanksgiving. Yes. We're gonna talk about this particular Thanksgiving, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. But first First. We're going to play Zabondo. Zabondo? Yeah, it's a the game. The game of... Would you rather... Would you rather it be Thanksgiving or Christmas? Um, I choose not to pick that question. Hey, guess Here. what? Here, you go first this time. We had this talk last week. Uh, I kind of compromised. I did not put up my Christmas tree, but I think I'm doing it tonight. I'm doing it next weekend myself, which I think is appropriate. Uh, the day after Thanksgiving to put up your Christmas tree? You know what I'm doing next weekend? What? I sh probably shouldn't say this over the podcast. What? I'll tell you later. Okay. <laughs> I, what, are you getting circumcised? Oh, wait, we talked about that last I'm week. I'm getting uncircumcised. So okay, here we go. Having a foreskin uh, added to uh, your re Restore penis? skin, yes. A restore skin. Uh -huh. Here All we right. go. All right, I'm shaking up the colors. I see you doing Ready? that. Yes. What do you think? I don't know, purple? Green. Red. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we were both wrong. <clears throat> So, would you rather <clears throat> walk within three feet of a swarm of bees Ooh. on your way to work every day? Every day. Uh, okay. Or walk within 30 feet of a group of drunk, loud vagrants? The bees. Absolutely, the bees. And it doesn't say that the bees will ever sting you. It just said, would you just rather walk you past them? You have to them? walk within three feet yeah, of them. I'll do that. How hard is it to walk within three feet of bees? 
and it depends on what kind of bees they are, and it depends on uh, you know what's going on in their lives. But for the most part, they'll leave you alone. I think. Yeah. I used to mow the grass for my grandfather when I was growing up, and he had a he had a, some beehives. He would he used to kind of raise his own honey, uh-huh. so you had to be really careful when you mowed around the beehive. Oh yeah. And I got stung a few times. Yeah. It doesn't feel good. No, it's uh, not. Fun. Occasionally, one will get up your pants leg. You got to rip your pants off. <laughs> St- they'll sting you on the wang. <laughs> on the wang. <laughs> You know, one of our listeners sent us a picture of his wang. We got we got a picture of Gary's wang this week. We did. Thank, Thank you, Gary. Gary. That, it was a very old wang. It was very old wang. And uh, we did, uh, you know, it wasn't unsolicited. We no. did ask for people to send a picture of their wang. We did. Gary did. And thank you, Gary, for sending your wang. We appreciate that. Okay. Don't, don't do it anymore, though. No. It's my turn for Zob Mondo. I'm going blue. Got a blue one. Ask me a blue question, You know, please. I've been hoping for a long time that you would pick blue. Do you know why? Mm-mm. Blue is magic. Blue is a magical color. Part it's, of my hair is blue. It's the color of the universe. It's the color that people... Never mind. All right. It's uh, appearance and embarrassment. Okay. Would you rather have a third eye? Mm-hmm. Where? It doesn't say. You okay. probably choose where you okay. want it. Mm-hmm. Or a very long tail that can't be removed. Oh, this is a tough one. Yeah, because I know which one I'd pick. You know, this is a really tough one. Like, what would that tail... Can it be like a monkey tail where I can swing from trees? It doesn't say. I guess you get to choose. Um, I guess There you are so choose. many options here. Okay. Right. So I can have like an iguana tail that I can smack people with. Yeah, this is a very long tail. So you, I don't know. It could be a, like a camel tail. Or or something or to an iguana tail, whip probably. flies off of me, like a really pretty horse tail. Finally, yeah. Um... Yeah, or I can put an eyeball wherever I choose. Yeah. Um, gosh, like an eyeball in the back of my head. Why would you want it there? Well, you, I would put it somewhere like on the palm of your hand. <gasps> yeah, so you could just stick your hand around doorways. Right. Yeah. And, and no one would know what it. Uh, that would be the thing is to make it to where you they couldn't you couldn't tell it was an eye. I wonder what would happen though if you looked at the palm of your hand and you were looking at your own eye. Or you're like shaking the hand with somebody. You're like, ow! What? You like, poked what? me in the you eye. poked me in the eye. And like, <laughs> no, I didn't. I just shake your hand. I know. Yeah, I'm going to go with the eye. That would... Okay. And no one would... For the most part, depending on where you chose to put it, no right. one would know you had it. Right. But, I mean, if you chose to put it in the traditional third eye position between your eyes, I guess everybody would know. Right. If I stuck it on my <clears> forehead, people <throat> might say, hey, what's that? The back of your throat so you could watch your food go down. Oh, you could put it on the... Uh, no. No, uh, Sherry, don't. What? You could put it on your cervix. Um. Okay. <laughs> And if I ever had sex again, yeah, I'd be able to see what it looked like from the inside. Yeah, um, I couldn't do that. No, you couldn't. No, but you, at least you'd be like, hi, 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 <laughs> hi, hi. <laughs> I'm not going to explain that for the kids at home. I don't even know what it means. I just made something up just now. Do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself <laughs> around. Put your eye out. <laughs> you can put your eye out that way. <laughs> All right, Zob Bondo for another week, and uh, we're moving into Thanksgiving. This is going to be a weird Thanksgiving. You know, every Thanksgiving, I always make special Thanksgiving dressing. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me. I want to talk about something real quick. Okay. We may have talked about this on the podcast before. Possibly. But anyway, I, I'm i debating on whether I want to do that this year. If I don't, it'll be the first time in my adult life since I've been... An adult. Vegetarian that I haven't made that special dressing. Really? Yeah. Maybe cut the recipe in half and only make half of it. That's no fun. It's an, it isn't the fact that I'm making too much. It's just I don't know that I want to put in the time to do it this year. I'm getting lazy as I get older. You are getting lazy. You so know, what are you going to do for dressing? I just, I'm nothing. We're just not going to have dressing? No, th- there will be dressing. I just don't know that I'm going to make mine. So there's dressing you can eat. It just won't be mine. I mean, why would I come if you didn't make your dressing? I don't, well, I didn't know you were coming for my dressing. Well, you never asked. You never told me. Um, <clears throat> I told you this. <laughs> I gotta see. I, I gotta be really careful how I choose choose my words. All right. Uh, I was in a relationship once, and the very first fight, huge, big, gigantic fight that we had, and this was a legitimate fight. And you you mean it was like an actual argument? Oh yeah, big fight, big gigantic one. Like it didn't end well. Really? Uh, was about whether it's called dressing. 
um, or stuffing. Wow. That was it was a real fight. It was the first time I was like, what is going on? What's happening here? And I, I had that feeling many times after that in that relationship. If I'm not mistaken, weren't you also in that relationship when you got into a very large argument about whether you're shredding or grating cheese? No, I never had that. You you mentioned that once in the podcast before. I've never had that argument with I anybody. I thought it was you. No, that wasn't me. Okay. But it's the same thing. It is basically the same argument. And so I didn't really know this person for a long time mm-hmm. when I when this happened. Mm-hmm. It, we were still kind of new. It was the year that we met. Okay. And I think we met around July or something like that. So July. So just a few months later, uh-huh. we're having Thanksgiving. First Thanksgiving, it turns into this, and it's just like, what? What's happening? Why? Why is this happening? And there was like hanging up and just big and rage and just big things and it was crazy you got hung up on in a during an argument and more but so anyway um after the fact or maybe during i can't remember it could be one of the reasons part of the reason why it happened i looked it up to see what what you know the difference between the two and there is a difference yes there is a difference stuffing is the stuff that goes in a bird if you stuff it right in the bird right therefore it's stuffing. stuffing Dressing dresses the bird and it goes on the outside. Yes. That's the difference between stuffing and dressing. And dressing. So what I make when I make it is dressing because it does not go in a bird. Um, depending on who's eating, it might actually go in meat. I don't tell people <laughs> where I put it before I serve it. They don't need to know that. So you cook it with the bodily heat that you create naturally. 98.6. That's what... Gotcha. For five hours at 98.6 That's right. (laughs) And delicious dressing. (laughs) Um, My Thanksgivings are very popular. Well, anyway, so that's the difference. And I don't know how, why, when, whatever, that that thing (laughs) had became an issue. But I'll never forget it. It was it was the um, it was a warning that I did not heed. You didn't heed that warning at all. I was in that relationship for probably four years, and there was all kinds of fun stuff like that that happened. It was fun. Wow. And 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 I say fun, not meaning fun. Right. Fun is just kind let's of. Let's just a, say it was interesting. Put, it, put fun in air quotes. It was interesting. Okay, so this. Particular Thanksgiving, I hope that you don't get in any of those arguments with any of those people. I don't, I don't want to be in any arguments like that. Ever again. No. no my wife won't argue anything like that. That's just silly. <laughs> so here's something. We have other dumb arguments, but. Here's something that you won't be arguing about. What's that? Is that, uh, okay, so you know there's been this huge recall no. this year on turkeys. I didn't know. Okay. Well, it's true. And it's due to a salmonella outbreak. Okay. Okay. Not totally surprising. Not really, because turkey, salmonella kind of go together. Now, here's something I have a question, not trying to totally <laughs> derail what you're saying, but I have a question for you. Do you know the answer to this? Um, is Are there turkey farms and chicken farms, or do they usually raise the turkeys with the chickens? Uh, my understanding is that they do not raise the birds together because turkeys can be mean to chickens. Turkeys kind of mean anyway. Yeah. Well, but chickens are mean. Yeah, but chickens are smaller than turkeys. They could get hurt. They, they're still. Have you ever watched a chicken fight? And I don't mean a cockfight, like illegal cockfight. Like I was, we, we raised chickens when I was growing up. Okay. I kind of grew up on a little mini farm. Mm-hmm. And every once in a while, chickens would get pissed off at each other. And they would fight until they were just bleeding everywhere. Yeah, they're, they're evil. Oh, yeah. They're mean. They were pissed off at each other. Yeah. It would a bloody chicken fight. Pecking and scratching oh, and yeah. all and that. And not stopping. No, they Keep don't going. stop. They don't give up. Nope. Very proud animals. I think that's why they people raise them uh, to fight. Some people do. Because they are like that. They'll fight. Well, you know, I mean, okay, if we're going to get there into that, I think they may have started out raising them for that. But cockfights, they actually like... They breed them. They breed them and then they put razors on them. Exactly, They yeah. put metal razors For on their talents, them. yes. And I think that's ridiculous. Yeah, to, to, to make more blood and to make more death. But, I mean, it, it left to their own devices, they'll do it on their own. They're still I've pretty... I've seen it happen. Pretty vicious. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So they're mean. Turkeys so, are mean. So having said that there are a whole bunch of turkeys that have been recalled by the government mm-hmm. for um, salmonella. Okay. Um, you would think, 
Okay, well, before I go to the grocery store and buy a turkey, I would like to know which farms sure. in particular. Yeah, that would be good to know. These turkeys that were infected were found at. Yeah, and that would be <laughs> what? Where, where? Who would we? And then you wouldn't you wouldn't buy your turkey from those farms. Probably. Right? I I don't think if I knew they had salmonella, I wouldn't be. You wouldn't be anxious to buy that particular brand of That's turkey. correct. Okay. Well, guess what? They're not telling us this year which farms. Really? Nope. And why is this? Um, I imagine it's something to do with lobbyists somewhere. So, um, surprise It's salmonella. surprise salmonella. You have salmonella. The USDA will not name the turkey plants that are uh, infected despite 164 illnesses and one death. So somebody has died from this particular salmonella outbreak. All right. It infected people in 30 five states they don't need to name just go to find out all of those people 100 people all they gotta do is just tell us where they got their turkeys and we turkey? kind of know yeah that's that information has to be available somewhere yeah yeah it, it's got to be available somewhere i don't know why and if it was like us. if it was you know georgia turkey company uh they would probably tell you the fact that they're not telling you probably means it's one of the big big top turkey companies oh i don't know i could name a few and this is not slander i'm just naming a few large turkey companies i wouldn't i wouldn't do that oh. unless it's in the article it's not <laughs> no, it's i wouldn't not. people could go to the store and find them out i mean that's true yeah but what's the first one that comes to your mind quietly to yourself would you buy that turkey today i wouldn't buy any turkey probably not uh my wife bought a turkey my wife does eat turkeys I don't eat turkeys. I don't eat turkeys either, honestly. She bought one. She, her mom's coming down. They're going to have their little salmonella dish. Uh, but having said that, you know, I mean, there's been some problems with lettuce and spinach and apples that well, have sure. salmonella in it. So it's not just it's not just the meat. It's not just meat. It's, it's fertilizer. Salmonella. It's how they raise it's, it. A lot of times, it's you know, if you put if you put salmonella uh, tainted um, uh, uh, cow poop. On your crop, you gonna get it? I guess. Okay, I so there is one how. article that I'm finding now while you're blabbing over there, um, that says, <clears throat> "Let me check the date on here just to be sure." Um, it does say that one particular turkey place recalled 91,388 pounds of raw ground turkey products. After the USDA found a sample of the products tested positive for salmonella reading matching the outbreak strain. Now, because it's on the internet, I wonder if I should say which one it is. You're reading an article? Mm -hmm. So as long as you're reading the article, we don't have any information other than the article. So that you could say what's in the article. Okay. With Thanksgiving <laughs> just around the corner, the U.S. Department of Agriculture's <laughs> Food Safety and Inspection Service has recalled turkey products linked to a salmonella outbreak. Jenny O. Turkey Store Sales, LLC, recalled 91,388 pounds of raw ground turkey products after the USDA found a sample of products tested positive for salmonella, matching the outbreak strain. Never heard any. I never heard that company before. So, just so you know, that's one of them, and that's a big one, and I, I imagine the other big ones. Are they big? Yeah, they're pretty big. Really? Jenny O.? No, I don't know anything about them. Well, you have not eaten meat in a very long time, so even no, if you I did know I mean, about them. I know some other turkey maybe. companies, chicken companies, but I don't know. I've never heard of them. So, oh, well. Well, I was, my, you know, we went out last night. My wife bought her turkey, and I was looking around. And I, and I know I said this to you, and I'm not going to kind of overdo it, but I just, it just hit me. I was looking in the, the freezer bin where she was buying her turkeys. There had to be like 50 turkeys in there, and I just started thinking, well, you know, just a couple weeks ago, those were all walking around, mm -hmm. just animals walking Pecking, around. Yeah. And then I looked down, then there was another thing with a bunch of uh, uh, hens, mm -hmm. chickens, and then there was some goose, there was a duck. Mm -hmm. And I, it, my head, I just started calculating, and then I turned around, and I was in the meat section, and then I started realizing, wait a second, there's like all these chickens, all these pigs, all these cows. And then I just thought, what do you think the body count at one regular one grocery, grocery store. store body count. Yeah. For all and, and then I started thinking like seafood, there's a lot of fish. Shrimp. Tons of shrimp. Each shrimp is a separate body. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean it's gotta be each store, what, what do you think? Five, six thousand bodies? Sure. And then you multiply that by 
a city, how many grocery stores in a city, mm-hmm. and then state and the United... I mean, mm-hmm. millions and millions and millions of bodies yeah. get processed, not just daily, but... Well, yeah, daily. I mean, daily and more. Yeah. Just always. Because they, they don't... So freaking many. Yeah. And, and, and oftentimes the meat at the grocery store doesn't last long enough till purchase time. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they do. Throw it out? Do they throw, throw it out? out. That's, that's weird. Just throw it out. Yeah. That's yeah. weird. I always feel bad about that. Like when I'm, and this is so dumb, but like when I'm giving my dog dog food, and I'm emptying the can. If there's like a little tiny piece of meat left or a little scrap of some, I always feel like it's my responsibility to make sure it, it gets used because it's like <laughs> that was someone's body at some point. Yes. What a shame just to throw it in the garbage. Yeah. It's like that's what you're worth. And if it's coming out of a dog food count, it's likely a horse or a mule. Maybe, but I mean, I just feel like at least. You know, you could say you weren't, you didn't die totally in vain. And, yeah. You know, yeah. I used to think about it when we watched Mythbusters mm-hmm. and they would like blow up a pig. Mm-hmm. And I thought, really, that pig died just so Mythbusters could blow it up? Yep. <laughs> That's why. Creepy. It is kind of creepy. Right. Um, now, neither you or I eat the aminals. No. Um, not all the aminals. I eat fish and seafood. I eat those, all those hundreds and hundreds of shrimp at the grocery store. This is weird, though. I grew up eating meat. You know that? Yeah. A yeah. big, giant, I mean, huge meat eater. That mm-hmm. was, I had meat with a side of meat. That mm-hmm. was my, I, and Thanksgiving, tons all of the meat. meat. Mm-hmm. Never stop. Just always every kind of meat. Yep. I haven't had meat. Let's see, I was 31. That's about, tw- is that 26 years old? 25. 25, 6. I could taste it in my mouth like I had it yesterday. Mm-hmm. It never goes away. The nope. memory of it does not go away. It doesn't because nope. you grew up eating it. I Those can... memories were formed and you know what it tastes like. I guess I and thought... if somebody tries to hand you fake meat, because I know that you're a big fake meat eater. Yeah. Because you like your food to taste like sure. meat. Um, so, so you're a big fake meat eater. But you know if somebody tries to hand you something and says this is a hot dog and you take a bite of it, you can tell if it's a real hot dog or if it's a veggie hot dog. Absolutely. Like most right likely. off the bat. Most likely. And, and pretty much every other type of meat that has been handed to you to eat as a meat substitute, okay, or, or every type of meat substitute that's handed to you to eat, you know. For the most part, yeah. You can tell this mm-hmm. is not real meat. Sure. Because they can never, ever emulate that. Exactly. There's yeah. no way. Um, the closest we've come is the Impossible Burger. Uh, yeah. I, I'm i not sure I would say that that ta- it tastes a lot like ground beef, but it, I mean, I could tell the difference. You can still tell the difference. But I just Absolutely. like it. I like the way it tastes. I like the flavor, mm-hmm. the texture, and all that kind but of stuff. But it's still not ground beef. No. And I mean, I, I don't know. I might actually prefer it over ground beef yeah. if I could. I don't know. Um, I don't know if you remember this, but. This might have been like the last year we were living together. We ordered a pizza, and whatever pizza we ordered was not the, what came. They it was it had been snowing, as I recall, mm-hmm. and they brought the pizza, and it had meat all over it. You all remember over that? It. And I we were it. like, "Really? What are we now? What are we supposed to eat?" Yeah. And we debated on what to do. We were going to toss it. We couldn't bring it back. I thought that's so stupid. We just paid for this pizza. There's already meat on it. We've already paid for it. It's not like we went out and bought meat. It was an accident. So I was just like, what do we do? Do we do we just dishonor the body of this animal or these animals that are on the pizza and throw it away? Or do we eat it because it's already here? So I wasn't sure what to do. I, know, I believe it was like the last. So what we decided was we would go ahead and keep the pizza and eat the pizza. But we tried to get as much of the meat off as we could. That's correct. And I think that was the last time that I purposely ate meat. I mean, even though most of it was up, there was still some meat in there. So you could still taste it every once in a while. You would get a. I don't remember what it was. Bacon? I think it was bacon. It was like bacon. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was bacon. And so every once in a while I'd eat and then I'd be like, oh, there's bacon. Yeah. And it was like, it tastes just like I remember bacon. It tastes tastes exactly like bacon. Yeah. Yep. I I dig into things sometimes at work during our potlucks and I think, um, (laughs) you know, I'm eating this and I'm going to just pretend that there's not meat in it um, and hope that there really isn't. And uh, most of the time there isn't. However, we just had our potluck. At yeah. work, and I wanted some green veggies. Mm-hmm. And you got bacon, pork. Basically, yeah. Welcome I couldn't to have, the South. I couldn't have any green beans. I couldn't. No, there's ham. I was able to have the corn because all there was in corn was butter. Yeah. And thankfully, uh, somebody that I work with uh, has some appetite restriction or some food restrictions of her own due to allergies. She made a kale salad. 
that was actually quite good, and it had no meat products in it. I ate at a buffet, a Chinese buffet in Dallas, Texas. I thought, I'll get some veggies here. I mean, everything had meat everything in it. Everything had meat in it. The mashed potatoes. Had meat in it. <laughs> had meat in it. Right? I was like, all right, Dallas, maybe, I guess, beef, you know, one of the beef industry locations. Dallas is not the place to try and be a vegetarian. I'm sure there's some good vegetarian restaurants in Dallas, though. There has to be. There has to be. Um, oh, man, I was going to say something I forgot. So last week, we talked about sex. Ah, oh, we often talk about sex. We got a letter this week, and I wanted to oh. talk about another thing, something I heard this week that just goes along perfect with that. Okay. I think first we should read the letter. I'll let you read the letter. Sure. Now, um, unfortunately, you didn't read through this letter. No, I didn't. I haven't yet. So you're going to be reading it cold. Okay. But, um, I mean, it shouldn't be a hard read. It's just straight out. All uh, right. This came to our website, and we encourage people to send us letters. This epic disaster at gmail.com. You can respond to something that we see on the show. Give your opinion. Give your feedback. Tell your experiences. Okay. Just like just like this person is anonymous doing. did. Anonymous says, Rick, Sherry, here are some comments about sex. Don't use my name, of course. Thanks. Sex is a much is mu- is such a relative term. I guess I would define sex. I've never had sex with my relatives, but there's a couple of them I I've thought about. Do you consider a stepbrother a relative? I do. Okay. Then I can't say anything. Sex is such a relative term. I guess I would define sex as mutual sexual arousal and contact. This could be something someone by mutual. Biting, mutual. So if one person's getting off on looking at someone through a window, right? Peeping Tom, right? That's not sex. No, it's, it's not. not a sex crime. No. It's not sexual at all. It's se- well, only one person's getting gratified. It's not mutual. Hmm. At that point, what would you call that? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. Okay. Um, This could be someone biting someone's ear while the other pinched a nipple. Ooh. If they both experience arousal, it could be considered a sexual encounter. It's intentional, of course. Accidental arousal doesn't count. You can't account for that. A guy who gets an erection when he sees an attractive woman isn't having sex. He's just having a physical response to external stimuli. If a hooker is... Can we go ahead and say this is not safe for work? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what. If a hooker's blowing you, right. you're getting something out of it. She's doing her job, and it's not sexual. Are you saying this is not a sex act? Sex act? Right, because it's not mutual. It's at that not, point. and he's getting off, and she's like, whatever. She's just getting paid. Yeah, give Hopefully. me my 50 bucks. Hopefully she's getting paid. <laughs> Unless it's a good hooker. All right. I work at restaurants. I've worked at restaurants for years. And at one place, there was a female employee that would continually come up behind me, usually at the computer, and grab my ass. Oh, I worked there. She she would always laugh when she did it and say something like, hurry up. We were good friends, and it didn't bother me in the slightest or turn me on. One night, I was waiting in line behind her, and I decided to grab her ass and said, hurry up. She turned around with wide eyes and said, what are you doing? Well, the lesson learned was that touching a butt for her was not sexual, just playful. Having her butt touched was a sexual advance. So we learn it's a variable, and you will probably lose if you try to guess on someone's response. I don't know. I, she didn't know it's not sexual for him, and she did it. Mm-hmm. She didn't ask. She Mm-mm. just did it. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's a double standard there. There's and a also, huge double standard yeah, there. And I feel like that it, either way it's wrong. Yeah. I, I, I don't consider it wrong. Um, hmm. I I don't know if you're good friends. If if I have a really good friend who squeezes my butt, right? I don't think I would get offended. I think if I didn't like it immediately, I would say don't do that anymore, right? And then leave it at that. Leave it at that. Um, and if if especially if it's at work, and that's dangerous. Any kind of sexual thing at work is dangerous. But if someone's doing it, you're doing it back, and it's it's mutual. Fine, right? right. But the problem. Uh, that stuff will always, uh, no pun intended, come back and bite you on the butt. It always will. <laughs> yes, because, it will. Yeah, I mean, uh, at some point, somebody's going to be mad at you, and then they're going to charge you, and it's that's a, that's a bad situation all the way around. Well, Anonymous goes on to say, I was quite surprised at her reaction, considering how many times she had done it to me. I felt terrible. I would have never done anything to make a sexual advance towards her. I was just being silly like she was silly with me. Again, lesson learned. Um... I think the lesson there is very, in my opinion, um, one 
one noted meaning that I don't know if that's the right word for it. What I'm trying to say is that you learned a lesson, anonymous, about your friend. Mm -hmm. You did not learn a lesson about all people. You learned a lesson right. about your friend. You learned a lesson about someone who'll squeeze your butt but doesn't want her butt squeezed. Right. That's the lesson you learned. And you learned that lesson with a lot of your friends because I'm sure you have a buddy who likes to dish out the mean-spirited comedy, but as soon as you turn around yeah. and dish it back to him, mm -hmm. he gets offended. Yeah. So again, it's an individual thing in my opinion. And it's really why there should be a line drawn that you just say, don't do it. Because you could go, I don't mind if you do it. Right. But I don't know if you mind. So let's just not even go there. Right. It so should it's just be like, we're at work. Don't touch my butt. I won't touch your butt. We're friends. If you want to let, we, if we want to touch each other's butt outside of the workplace, that's fine. Let's do it. There you go. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to continue with the letter. Anonymous says, "My wife grows extremely aroused when her nipples are touched." Wait a minute. Right. This is not true of everyone. That's also true. For her. Yeah, it never happens when I do it. <laughs> I hope I don't know this person because uh, <laughs> anonymous my wife doesn't like it when Rick touches her nipples. But <clears throat> anyways, um, this is not true of everyone. That's true. Uh, for her, that contact is considered sex. Yeah. For me, it is hopefully a prelude to sex. Sex for me usually involves genitalia in some way, either through intercourse, oral, or by hand. I do not have to orgasm to have sex. I just have to have the contact. Okay, so so let me ask Anonymous this question. In the first paragraph, he says sex is a mutual... No, he says, I guess I would define sex as mutual sexual arousal and contact. You're assuming it's a dude. I'm, well, I am assuming so. Mm. So let's say that this person's wife is giving him a hand job. Right. Is she... In not any, while he's doing the letter, I hope. I don't know. There's nothing on it, but we printed it out here. Um, it's not like he mailed it. So um, if she is giving him a hand job, mm -hmm. he is obviously being sexually uh, manipulated yes. and aroused right. and having a blast. Right. But what pr pleasure is she getting out of that by using her hand? Is that considered sexual arousal? Um, wow. Okay. So this gets into a personal area that I won't go into too much. But I but I also believe that you a person doing the hand thing could enjoy it. Almost as much as the other person. Would you say that they are sexually enjoying themselves? It's, it is. See, that's where I kind of uh, deviate from this letter writer. Is I, I'm not so. I think that that this person's definition of sex is kind of one sided. It's just like the sex comes from the person who's enjoying it, not the other person. Right. Um, and if you're mutual enjoying it, then it's like a sexual thing together. Mm -hmm. But I tend to, I don't know. I, I feel like, I think if, if that's going to be your description of sex, then, I, then I, like again, then having sex with a hooker who's just doing it because it's her job and not getting anything sexual out of it, um, it's not sex. It's, I guess not. Okay, so Maybe uh, it is. final paragraph from uh -huh. Anonymous. It's such a relative thing, like I said. I guess intercourse is the one thing people agree on. Oh, and as far as circumcision goes, it's never bothered me and no one has ever complained about it. I guess I prefer it, but glad I don't remember it. Okay, I mean, yeah, most people don't remember being circumcised. No. So, that yeah, well, is uh, that person's thoughts on sex? And I'm glad to have them. I mean, that's kind of stuff that I like to hear, just other, you know, because there's so many different points of view. And, that's and that can be a very relative, like he said, he or she said, mm -hmm. thing. It's a yeah. relative idea, well, concept. And yet... When you get into the legality of it, when it's being utilized in a crime, it cannot be a relative thing. Let's talk about that because I, I wanted to lead into that. And it's kind of a good thing, especially the legal thing, because this is what I listened to this week. And other people may have heard this, too. It was, I think it was a podcast. I can't remember which podcast. I want to say it was This American Life, but I'm not sure. But they did a story so interesting. And this happened in Canada. Mm -hmm. What? I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but basically what they discovered was happening was in a particular teaching university hospital, mm -hmm. um, and that mean that, to just to explain what that is, you know, obviously some universities, their their hospitals also are places where the medical students learn as they're going. And exactly. a lot of times you get a, a much lower uh, payment or bill. 
there mm -hmm. because of that, I guess. But oftentimes at teaching hospitals, you get much better care. Yeah, I'm not saying it, you're having less mm -hmm. quality. Mm -hmm. Certainly not. In, in a lot of situations, you actually get better. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, this is what was happening. And and one of the students talked was talking about this. And so what he discovered was a woman was having a... Uh, regular surgery, just a just a normal regular surgery. Okay. While she was under anesthesia, they one of the doctors encouraged the student to do a gynecological exam on her. Wait, what? That's kind of what the student. Now again, I'm paraphrasing this. I'm condensing a lot of what happened into just a few sentences. So you know, um, <coughs> and the student was like uncomfortable. I would be too. And he talked to his sister about it, who was also a medical student. And she was like, well, yeah, that happens all the time. We do it all the time. And he was like, really? Well, I just kind of felt weird about it. He was like, I, you know, if it was me, I would want to give consent before anybody did something like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And she thought, you know, you're right. So she started thinking about it and she did some research and she started kind of going in front of doctors and the doctors were like, shut up. Don't talk about this. We have to do this. It's the only way we can get a lot of people to give to where we can do some of this stuff. Because if a woman comes to it for a regular exam, a lot of times she's not going to allow a student in there to do the exam. So the only way the students can get practical experience is when these women are unconscious. And we're doing it without their consent. And they found out that this was something that was going on on a huge scale all over the country. And when this woman started trying to expose it, the doctors became really pissed off. And she realized that this was a huge thing. Okay, so the only reason those doctors are becoming pissed off is because they know it's wrong and they're getting caught. They were saying, and, and it was interesting, She they interviewed this person, and she said a lot of the doctors were like, what's the difference in examining a person's throat while they're under? And examining a vagina. She said, they said, what you're doing is you're putting morality on it. We're just saying it's a body part that we work on and we need experience to look at it. We're not making it a sexual thing. We're just saying we're examining um, because we have the opportunity to do so. You're trying to make it into something else. It's a very interesting debate. And what she said was the difference was the women who had it done to them would have said that there's a difference. And because of that, there's a difference. Okay. A, yes, I agree with that. But B, I don't want you examining any part of me that I haven't agreed to be examined. Yes. While I am unconscious. And how do you know that that's not happening? And there is a person in the room with me, keeping me unconscious through medicines and, and monitoring my vitals and all that while you do what you want. Mm -hmm. Anything that you do at that point that I have not consented to should be illegal unless it's to save my life. I can't remember how it ended. I can't remember. I feel like it, it turned into legislation. I imagine. I think. But <clears throat> the just the fact that it was going on was amazing and the resistance that she got back from the doctors yeah that that's crazy that blows me away yeah and i mean i don't think i'm i don't think it's like what you were saying i just think they reckon they just saw it as an opportunity they were just like how else are we going to do this and you're going to blow it right now because you're going you know for for a moral reason and we're trying to do it for a scientific reason and you're going to ruin our opportunity. So I completely understand the necessity to practical experience when becoming a doctor. I get that. I can even understand this person's argument of this is the only chance that we're going to have to do this, et cetera, et cetera. To a point, there are other programs and other ways that these doctors can learn this. Why don't these doctors who all need experience doing gynecological exams offer some free health care and get together and do that. I mean, come on. Do you know how many women can't afford to get their yearly exams? If it was offered free, they wouldn't care if you're a student. They wouldn't care if that's how you're going to get your experience. They would go and get the care that they need. Yeah. 
I just I think that there are other ways. There are a multitude of other ways rather than doing something to someone they haven't consented to while they are unconscious. And to think about what if some student was doing something and did something wrong Mm -hmm. and actually caused a problem or caused an issue that either was permanent or whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how do you explain that shit? Oh, we were doing a, you know, a, uh, uh, we were, you know, doing a surgery to fix a uh, something with your, with your voice box, et cetera, et cetera. And by the way, you know that that cut on your labia. Don't worry about that. I, and what they found out, and again, this was in Canada, but what they found out was that a huge amount of a huge percentage of women had had this done. It was just so it was so commonplace. And so, I don't know if there if it hap- has happened here, and if it happens here. But I just wonder. And, and you know, okay, now that we're talking about this, I have to have surgery, you know, very, very soon. But would that bother you? Like, I had a colonoscopy, was it this year or last yeah, year? I think it was this early year. this year. <clears throat> there were easily 10 people in that room. Mm-hmm. I don't know who was the student. I don't know who mm-hmm. was a news reporter. I mm-hmm. really don't know. Mm-hmm. There were just 10 faces. And I know... Everyone in the room was going to see my ass right. at some point. Right. I don't know how many people were going to feel it. What am I supposed to do? I can't say who's doing this. I mean, and again, this kind of turns it into a, a, a little bit of a sexual thing. But I mean, I think women are so used to the thought of being violated and actually being violated that I think that's something they think about a lot more than men. Mm-hmm. So... It's something we think about every day. I, I just, I just like, well, I mean, one person's violating for me. So just like, whatever you got to do. I don't know how many people have to do it, but just let's just do it and get it over with. And I don't want to see you again. And Ever. Stop sending me cards. Well, yeah. But okay. So yeah, there's a lot of things that women think about. That That's men don't creepy think though. About. The whole thing is creepy. The I just, what I heard about it, I was like, really? Creepy. This is going on? Yeah. It's extremely creepy. And it, and it. And again, like I said, I have to have surgery. I just found out, uh, I don't think I've mentioned this on the podcast yet, but I had an MRI done on my knee, and I have um, a torn meniscus, and uh, also I have arthritis in both knees. Uh, According to the doctor, uh, within the next 10 years, I will have a partial replacement on both knees. So, there's that. What are you looking for? Where did I put my beer glass? (laughs) That's a very good question, and I don't know. <coughs> I don't either. It was up here. It just suddenly disappeared. However, <coughs> let me continue. I don't see it anywhere. <laughs> I, um... It's the vanishing glass. <laughs> we haven't gotten up and moved. It's got to be down there when you were coughing. Okay. It was empty. <laughs> and I guess I just thought I want to get it out of the way. And then I, in typical fashion, I forgot yeah. where it so was. So doctor says to me yesterday, you know, if you were about 10 years older, I would say, let's just go ahead and do the partial replacement now. And but I'd like for you to go out with me. I kind of wish he would. He's kind of cute. Really? Yeah. Uh-oh. But this is just me. Whenever I have he's to have He's going to be inside your knee, though. Whenever I have he's to have He's like surgery, working on your knee, and he's like, hey, Sherry, I'm inside you right now. Oh, that's creepy. That's It, it won't be him inside me. He's doing a, a, a scope. So Uh-oh. it'll just be the instrument. It'll just be his instrument. My scope is inside you, Sherry. My instrument is inside you. <laughs> yeah. If only you were awake. So soon I get to be the bionic woman. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Lindsay Wagner. No, 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 no. Yes. I like Lindsay Wagner. Who didn't like Lindsay Wagner? She's cute. She's very cute. Okay. But she's still cute. Of course. I wonder if her parts. I wonder if her parts are still bionic. I bet, like, because what? She's probably in her sixties now. Older than that. I, I think bet she's she can, in her seventies. She's like she's probably like hurting all over, except for her knees and her ear. Because they're bionic. So, like, the bionic woman. So you had the bionic man, mm-hmm. and he had a uh, bionic. Was it one arm? I think he had one arm that was bionic. No, you're thinking of RoboCop. <clears throat> no. Then two Hold bionic on. legs. Uh huh. And a bionic eye. Okay. That was the bionic man. The bionic woman had two bionic legs and a bionic arm and a bionic ear. So she could hear long distance. He could see. 
<laughs> you know, you're also, it's funny because you're also uh, sexualizing that by saying that. Why? Because men are aroused more by visual stimuli and women are aroused more by audible stimuli. Um, well, I'm not saying, I'm just telling you what happened. So, th- I mean, what they're insinuating maybe is that they had great sex. I, I think there was the an two ep- of them probably would together. I'm thinking there was an episode where they de- they got together. Did they do they it? They did some bionic during the episode. Nasty going on. I think. Did they, did they bump bionic uglies? I don't know that, but I can't remember if they did. I think it was one of those I can never see you again kind uh, of things. I don't um, know because you got to do another series on your own. Got you. I don't know. Got you. But yeah, she was cute. Interesting. I liked her, Lindsay Wagner. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So okay, Thanksgiving coming up. Let's discuss. What were the traditions? Did you have traditions, Thanksgiving traditions, when you were growing up? Or did you just, like, eat It was food? all about food. It was just food. It was all about food. But, I mean, did you get, like, family together? Yeah. 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 Then people you hadn't seen all year, and they come over? Okay. I don't remember. That's so weird. I don't remember Thanksgiving at my house when I was a little kid. I just don't remember it. You know what's weird that people don't talk about much? What? Uh, Thanksgiving divorce. Oh. Because you, because I was married uh, for eleven years, uh, my first wife, and a big part of Thanksgiving was with her family. Right. So it was like for eleven years of my life, I was at a, another family's house, mm-hmm. and then boom, they're not your family anymore. Not only do you. So you, you don't know, you see don't have them every wife. year again. No. Yeah. And so it's like the whole, that whole family that was your Thanksgiving family for a long time. Boo. No, you don't get oh them God. anymore. Okay. You know, it's funny. When I left my first husband, I still went to their families for Thanksgiving. <laughs> that was uncomfortable. Well, I'd been with them for, for 10 years. <laughs> we were, you know, and we're talking from the time I was 15. Yeah. You know, so so there's some. some. <laughs> He's like bringing his wife. He's like, I wish Sherry would leave. I mean, anyway that, uh, can we just not have Sherry here <laughs> Next year we don't invite her. No, no. They were all very, very welcoming. <laughs> It'd be funny if I showed... No, it wouldn't be funny. If I showed up at my ex's <laughs> family with like my new girlfriend. Hey, everybody. What do you just think would happen I would... if I showed up at Larry's for Thanksgiving? Uh, just I would try it. Just <laughs> do it. <laughs> just be like, you know... I haven't seen y'all in a while. I knew there'd be some good food. Just yeah. coming by to say, I brought some devil I'm eggs. hungry. I brought- <laughs> I'm poor this year. I can't afford my own Thanksgiving. I, just, I, can, I can afford to drive to Knoxville, I haven't seen you in years, but... That's it. but. Uh, by the way, for those of you that don't know, Larry is Rick's brother. And, you know, uh, knowing my family, they uh, number one, they wouldn't care. Mm-mm. And number two, they would ignore you. This is the way yeah. my, my family, when they get together for any kind of... Um, and it takes some getting used to. But I have a very, very large family, yes. and when people come, join the family, like through marriage, or you're a friend, or you're dating, or whatever, and you come over, and you think, oh my gosh, everybody's going to make a big deal. because They I'm basically gonna... ignore you. Yeah, no one cares. They nope. act like you've been there forever. Exactly. And you're lucky if anybody's going to talk to you, because it's just like, whatever. Well, you're just here. But that's the way I grew up. It was just like, there's so many people in the family, and somebody's dating someone new constantly. Yep. So you can't make a big deal. It's just like, oh, there's a new person. There's a new face. Half the time, it's just like, well, I don't know who this person is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so no one makes a big deal about it. I like it that way, personally. I, I, I never like going over place, to places and, and doing things where people made a big deal about me. Yeah. I don't want to be that person. Yeah. No. As a single woman, when I was still living in Alaska... Um, after my second husband and I split, uh, I just became a fixture for the holidays at Rashawn's house. And all of you know Rashawn because she was here visiting. The stalker. The stalker. Uh, I just became a fixture at her house for holidays. Or even if we went to her extended family's mm-hmm. places, I was, was it just like there. like a Nazi Thanksgiving? What? Nazi Thanksgiving. Was that? She dated a Nazi. She was oh, married no. to a Nazi. This was well after him. This is like the well turkey was doing him. a Hitler salute or something. Right. I don't no. know. I mean, maybe in her previous Thanksgivings. <laughs> Only white meat. But this was with her second husband <coughs> and her second husband's family. Mm-hmm. And it just, it became a thing. Uh, and at one point, like I was just expected to be there for things like Thanksgiving and Christmas. Um, and at one point, I literally, Rashawn was counting on her hands for how many people are coming, blah, 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 all this. And I was like, yeah, I'm here too. And she goes, she looks at me and she literally says, yeah, but you're just here. You're, she just, I mean, and it was so flippant and it was so amazing. I was like, yes, I am. I am just here. It was very zen. You're kind of responsible 
Man. There's some stories maybe I shouldn't say and tell out loud. Maybe some are too personal. I don't think so. Tell them. Uh, you're kind of responsible, probably, in a weird way, for me, like, meeting my wife. Mm -hmm. and being, so, I don't know if you remember this, but, like, so the year that I met my wife, we were, you were coming over to my house for Thanksgiving. Yep. I had just met someone else. And I had invited her to Thanksgiving, and I forgot you were coming over. <laughs> and she was going to come to my house, and we were going to meet for the first time. And I said, oh, uh, <laughs> by the way, I invited a friend over, and she's coming. And she's like, oh, oh, well, that's okay. And then she was like, uh, who's this friend? And I explained, I was like, um, she's kind of my ex. <laughs> and she was like, oh, oh, you invited your ex over to Thanksgiving. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, let me think about it. And then she was like, um, no, I don't think I'll come over. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. Okay. And then uh, that week, Thanksgiving week, I met my wife. Yep. She wasn't my wife when I met her, though. Not at the time. No. no. Uh, but I met her. Uh, we've already talked about this. I was I was on Match.com mm -hmm. taking down my profile. I was mm -hmm. just like, this sucks. This mm -hmm. is the worst side. I'm never going to meet anybody. Uh, and I was taking it down. And as, as I was... I thought, well, I'm going to do one more little search before I take it down. And then I did a little search, and I was like, wait, hold on. Who's that cute girl? Mm -hmm. And I was just like, oh, don't get into anything. No. And I was like, I'm just going to send her one little quick little email. And I sent her a little funny thing, and then that was it. And she responded with a funny little weird thing, and then that was it. And then I responded back, and it kept going. And next thing you know, now we're married. Now you're married. And it was all Tom Waits doing. Would Tom and yours. And mine. If you hadn't come over right? that one Thanksgiving, that girl could have come over. Right. And then what if something happened? Right. And she got pregnant. And then it just went on. Now, you and I had planned <laughs> that very year to go to uh, Universal Studios. Yeah, you're mad because we didn't do that. I was going to take you to yeah. Universal Studios. I was going to pay your way didn't happen to universal studios yeah. because i wanted you to see the gloriousness that is universal studios yeah i'll do that someday and, and i'll let you pay you we were all set to go and i was getting ready to buy the tickets and you said oh by the way i can't go i because can't go because I'm i have dating a this girl person now. and i can't tell her that i'm going to go to universal with my ex mm -hmm. the thing is now she would probably be like oh, i don't care i don't care at all she'd be like that's awesome go <laughs> she's she's okay get out of my hair well that was weird i mean um wow thanksgiving it's not my favorite holiday uh other than the fact that it kind of like falls right in between some, two of my favorite holidays it's just the holiday season i like it i like it fine i like it too it shouldn't be a holiday though i don't think i mean i wonder if i should talk about this uh i don't even know what that is okay oh uh, let's talk about that later. Okay. You know what we should do? <laughs> I kind of feel like we should do a live Thanksgiving broadcast because you're going to be here. I am. Let's just do a quick live thing. Even if people don't watch us, I don't care. It'll still be up. Uh -huh. So we'll do, maybe we could do like a kind of a live thing if sure. I could figure out, if I could remember how to set up the live thing. Yeah. It's so like at some point, button. Thanksgiving night, some Thanksgiving evening, you don't have to tune in if you don't want to. <laughs> we'll probably broadcast live. What do we say? Like about seven or eight or something? Something like that. Six, seven, that eight, good. nine, ten, yeah. eleven. Yeah. I don't know. You bring your dog up here. I'll bring my dog. Well, uh, if if I'm allowed to bring no my dog. No one's going to want to dog sit your dog. No. No. No one wants to dog sit my dog. Um, We should probably close it down. Have we done everything we're supposed to do? I think so. What um, have we not talked about? Don't we don't know. have anything going on right now. No, we're just we trying to kind of float through the holiday season. Well, I think we talked a lot about the holiday stuff. So I think we got everything that we needed to talk about. We do need to wrap up our... Live beer review. Yes. Now, here's what I'm wondering. What's you that? have drank maybe a third of this beer. Yeah. I Mine is gone. Mine's been gone for a long time. Here, you can have the rest of mine. No, I'm not going to drink your backwash. It's not backwash. It's beer. No, I'm not drinking it. Sorry. I don't, I don't drink after people. I don't like that. Stop. I'm a... Is, is it... You don't like it? It's not that I don't like it. I think I'm just not in the mood for it. It's actually oh. a very flavorful beer. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and if I were in the mood for it, I'd probably be on my second one by now. Yeah. I, I mean, because it is a really good beer. Mm -hmm. uh, it definitely has the notes of chocolate and coffee, like it said. It's slightly it's, heavy, very flavorful. But it's a pretty standard porter. Yeah, I think honestly. so. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give it maybe two and a half. I'm giving it three and a half. 
Oh wow, you liked it more than me. I well, did clearly. like it. Oh, I mean, I do like. I tend to like porters, but that you know wasn't my favorite. But it's still good. Mm-hmm. Still good. Three and a half. <laughs> okay, great. So if you are interested in trying it, it is the thank you, uh, the Einstock. Einstock. Oh, no, that's German. <laughs> this is this is Nordic. Nordic. I did no. This is Icelandic. It's an Icelandic toasted porter by Einstock. If you like Nordic stuff, yeah, let me give you, you totally a clue. Like this. If you really like ASMR, like I do, uh huh. There's an ASMR artist called Nordic Whispers, Ooh. and she sounds like Bjork when she talks, and she whispers, and every time, every, every video, she shows her boobs. She does not. Yes, she does. But. I, I don't watch it for the boobs. Right. I don't watch it for the boobs. Uh-huh. Now they're I mean, okay, let me let me clarify. Not naked boobs. She's wearing clothes, but very revealing clothes to show she she's she's got she's got the goods, let's just say. <laughs> Huge tracts of land. Huge tracts of land. <laughs> but she, but she has that Bjork voice. Mm-hmm. I mean she's from Iceland and she's got oh, great voice. Okay. Great voice. For those of you that are into the Nordic ASMR thing. Whispers. <laughs> Nordic whispers. Um, yeah, so this is actually from Iceland, by the way. It's and maybe brewed she's and bottled in Einstock Olgerd uh, in Iceland. I don't know the, the place in Iceland. I can't pronounce that. But it's it's brought over here to LA from um, Einstock. Yeah. Okay. Three Check five. It out. I like it. Try I think it. it's good. Good deal. And I like Nordic whispers, so. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Bjork, and I, I love Bjork's I don't, voice. I don't get okay. For those of you listeners that didn't know, I just don't get the ASMR. Thing. We're going to do an ASMR show. You know, I've talked to an ASMR artist, a popular, kind of well-known ASMR artist, mm-hmm. who has tentatively agreed to be on our show. Okay, do we all have to? Whisper? Which means she's kind of smart if she's tentatively <laughs> agreed to it. Do we all have to whisper? No, but I think that she should, and I think we need to talk about ASMR, what it is, and and all of that kind of stuff. I think I'm just going to start an ASMR, you know, channel on YouTube. Okay, a lot of people do that, and I think they do it because they think they're going to get famous. But I feel like that if you don't get ASMR, if you're doing it just to get famous, it's not going to last. I think you have to know because here's what I, some of my favorite ASMR artists. Mm-hmm. Man, this is a tangent. We shouldn't go down this way. But anyway, they they. You can tell they get something out of it when they do it. And a lot of times when they are doing it, the sounds that they're listening to, you could tell they're getting off on those sounds. And I don't mean sexually, just love. They're really getting into the sounds. Yeah. So you have to know a little, you have to appreciate it in order to be successful at it. I think you could do it for a while. You've got a pretty good voice. And I think you, if you were into ASMR, you could do it. Yeah. But ASMR really just kind of irks me. Like totally. it, it literally makes me feel uneasy. I know so many people who are like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I do believe that there's some ASMR that everyone at some point could uh, benefit from or get. But even though some people probably don't get much of it. There are voices, though, and there are yes. ways of speaking that when I hear them, I am completely entranced. Mm-hmm. And 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 just kind of stop everything and just listen. Yes. So I understand what's happening, I suppose. Yes. But at the same time, those are so few and far between. Have you ever seen that uh, cartoon with the Tasmanian devil? And he's going, yes. And yes. Bugs Bunny starts playing the violin. Yes. And he goes, mm-hmm. that's what I do at ASMR. <laughs> <laughs> that's me. <laughs> I uh, I turn into a, a drooling idiot. Okay. I people could come into my house and steal everything I have, and I just I won't be able to move. I'm just I'm hypnotized. I'm stuck. I'm just in that zone. That's I can't. So just, interesting. And it, ever, it does it. And there are some people who do it so well. And so that's what I want to do when we have an ASMR show at some okay. point. I would talk about my okay. favorites and uh, maybe get some people. I, I feel like. What ninety percent of the people don't even know what the hell we're talking about, but it's it's young people because ASMR they say is like one of the most popular uh, channels. It is on YouTube, mm-hmm. and I mean, th- there's a couple of people who have like millions of listeners. Sure, sure. But it's so good to relax. It's relaxing. It makes me relax. It makes me uneasy. It does. It makes me, my wife hates it. Yeah. I don't. I've never dated anyone who loves it. <laughs> <laughs> You'd both just be a couple of vegetables. Yeah. 
I yeah. Yeah. Well, let's stop this uh, podcast. Okay. Everybody, we hope you have a happy Thanksgiving this week. We will um, do something live on Thanksgiving, so if in, you're it's around. probably stupid. We yeah. might have been drinking. Maybe. When we do it. A little bit. I don't know. Probably. Maybe we'll eat on the show. No, let's not do <laughs> I that. I don't know. No. But, uh, but we'll do a little uh, something, something, something. Yeah, sounds fine. It's not going to be anything formal. Thanks for listening in. today. If you want to reach out to us, you can find us. You can reach us at uh, thisepicdisaster at gmail.com. You can mm. also find us on Instagram, Twitter. I don't know how active the Twitter is right now, but we also are on Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, facebook.com slash thisepicdisaster. And you can download us anywhere you can download podcasts. And our central location, thisepicdisaster.com. That's, we're there too. A lot of fun stuff. The podcasts are on there as well. Okay. Okay. Thanks for listening. <laughs> uh, we'll see you next week. All right. Bye. This is a Violet Jester Media Podcast.